This is Taspoon, the series where I aim to complete the collection log one random task at a time. After nearly two years and over 4,000 hours of gameplay, I'm finally ready to take on RuneScape's endgame as I venture into the Elite tier. Welcome to Season 4 of Taspoon. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 131 of the Taspoon series. In the last video, I did a bunch of Chambers of Zarek, where I managed to stag myself an Arcane Prayer Scroll. I did some Duke, I did some Hydra, and we ended the video by doing some clues and rolling an Elite Clue task, where I opened all the Elite Clues I had in my bank and I didn't manage to get a single unique. So here we are. I need to go figure out what I want to do to get these Elite Clues, and then I will come back to you with a plan. So I've been doing some thinking about what I want to do to get these elite clues and a lot of people are probably going to say why not go do some corrupted gauntlet, uh, but no thank you. As you can see, I have no need to go back there and uh, yeah, I would rather not. So instead, I did the math and I can actually get more elite clues per hour at the Phantom Muspa. Uh, Muspa drops elite clues at a rate of 1 in 50, and assuming I can get about 15 kills per hour, which might be a little generous, uh, I should get an elite clue every 3 hours, versus if I were doing Corrupted Gauntlet, getting about 5 to 6 KC an hour at a rate at 1 in 20, it would take me about 4 hours to get an elite clue there. So I can actually get faster elite clues at Muspa, and I don't have to do Corrupted Gauntlet, and I can start working towards getting all of the, uh, whatever it's called, the dust, I forget the name of it. Uh, the thing to saturate the imbued heart. The ancient essence, that's what it's called. Uh, if I can start stacking up some ancient essence. Ooh, grats, hell puppy, fog. Um, if I can start stacking up some ancient essence and eventually saturate this imbued heart, that'd be very nice. And if I can get some venator shards, that'd be cool too. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go do it. Phantom Muspa. This is also one of the reasons that I decided to do some Duke last video when I had a Desert Treasure 2 boss task. Uh, now that I have the ring, I can just teleport right to the Gorok dungeon, and it puts me right outside Muspa, which is very convenient. Well, there is the 50kc achievement, and uh, as you can see by the inventory, I'm bringing a mage now with Ancients instead of the Archaea spell book for Thralls. Um, I don't know, I just find it a little bit easier, I don't have to worry about doing the whole step back thing, I can just freeze them and sit there. Uh, and I'm not really getting that many kills per trip anyway with either method, so I'm not really losing out on that aspect. I don't know, I just find it easier. I figured I might as well do the combat achievement where you can only walk for the entire kill. Uh, now that I'm bringing freezes, it was pretty easy. Wrong kind of clue. As I said before, Muspa drops elite clues at a rate of 1 in 50, and it says it drops hard clues at a rate of 1 in 40, but I think it's going to be even slightly less than that because I have the hard combat achievement diary done. Uh, but I am going to be doing all the hard clues that I get. I'm just going to do them at the same time as I get an elite clue. So I'm not going to stop killing Muspa every time I get a hard clue. That would just take too long to, you know, bank everything, change spellbook, re-gear, etc. So every time I get an elite clue, I'm also going to be doing all the hard clues. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of hard clue tasks left on the elite tier as well. So stacking up those caskets is going to be nice. And yeah, this is just a good way to get both of them. Hey, I needed one of those. So I know I just said that my trips weren't very long, but I got a bunch of supply drops in a row this time, and I think this should be my 10th kill. Which gets me a combat achievement. So that's convenient, and more supplies. It really doesn't want me to leave. Wow, I got 10,000 essence on that one trip. That's crazy. When you think about it like that, I'm only 8 trips away from saturating my imbued heart. Now, obviously, that was an extremely long trip, but uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I am going to take a quick detour now that I have this spirit seed. I can finally go and boost for my uh, combination spirit tree fairy ring in my POH. So I'm just going to do that real quick. I need to get a plus five boost, but uh, shouldn't take too long. This is actually all the orange spice I have left in the bank. So hopefully I get lucky or not unlucky and I can get it rather quickly uh, because, yeah, I really don't want to have to go and hunt more rats. 
Spoiler alert, I did not get lucky. Of course, I go and get an entire inventory of orange spice just to get it on the very next boost, but uh, I guess I can't complain. There we go. Combination spirit tree fairy ring built. Now, I could move an actually useful room to where my fairy tree used to be, but instead, I'm going to put my pet menagerie. That way, every time I teleport in, I get to see my pets closer. I love them. Okay, little update for you guys here. I am at 100 KC. Still no Venator Shard and no Elite Clues yet, unfortunately. No duplicate icons either, so... Yeah, that kind of sucks now that I'm thinking about it. I didn't actually really realize what was going on until I opened this menu here, but... Uh, yeah, 100 kills, just gonna keep going. Oh yeah, and I'm nearing in on 100,000 Ancient Essence, so getting close to two-thirds of the way done in that regard. And, uh, yeah, that's actually not taking nearly as long as I thought. For some reason, I thought it was gonna take me, like, three, four hundred kills to get enough Ancient Essence to saturate my imbued heart, but looks like we'll be done at around 160, 170, so, yeah, that's actually not too bad. Hey, an ancient icon, finally. You can actually grind down these ancient icons for some ancient essence. I believe you get 5,000 per icon, uh, but I would like to keep them. I want to get all four of the ancient scepters eventually, even though I don't have any of the quartzes yet, uh, all the Desert Treasure 2 boss tasks in the elite tier, I feel like I will get them all soon enough. So yeah, I'm going to hold on to these until I get three more, uh, along with the fourth that I already have, and then I will grind down any future ones for Essence. It's only 5,000, so it's not like a huge deal. The Venator Shards, when you grind them down, give 50,000, although obviously I still need five of them to make the bow, so I won't be doing that anytime soon either. Uh, but yeah, Icon, cool. So I've been thinking about the combat achievements a lot recently. I think I'm going to try and push for Elite tier. Uh, obviously it's going to take a while. It says 110 points away, but 110 points is a lot of points still. But I think I'm just going to try and focus on pretty much everything that I do going forward. I'm going to try and do as many of the Comet achievements as possible. Unlocking the Elite tier is actually going to be huge for me. Uh, increased chance at Elite Clues is going to be amazing going forward. I do have a lot of Elite Clue tasks left still. And uh, yeah, this is just a good example. I was sort of just ignoring these and admittedly, I still am going to ignore the speed task because there's nothing I can really do to help those. But I'm going to try and do these other two, uh, starting with the one where you have to kill it with the salamander. I don't know how this is going to go, to be honest, but I'm just going to try. And I realized this honestly shouldn't be that hard. Now, I might regret those words, but... I'm just going to try, I don't know, I really want the Elite tier, so I'm just going to try and do everything I can, and yeah, this is what we're starting with, Salamander time. Well, I can't say that it was fun, but it only took me two tries. Uh, I did have to go and catch more black salamanders because I only had one in the bank. And if you die, it runs away. That was kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, now I'm going to try and do the other one. So essentially, I just need to not get hit by any avoidable damage while only walking and also cover or surround him in spikes at the very end. So it shouldn't be too hard per se. I've done all those things individually. I just have to do them all in the same kill. I am very confused why I didn't get the combat achievement there. I didn't have the thing on that tells you when you fail combat achievements, which I'm going to turn on now. But I don't understand. I, I went through the footage. I did everything right. The only thing that might not have worked uh, when I killed Phantom Muspa, the single tile in the middle of his death. Uh, it didn't look like it had a spike on, but it's stupid if that doesn't count because one, it says to surround him, which it was, and two, uh, when Muspa is in the middle of spikes, it like phases out the spikes so you can't see them. So you are you can't even know if it if there is a spike there or not. I don't know. I, I feel like I should have got the common achievement. I, I, whatever. I'm just going to go again. Okay, if this doesn't work, I'm very upset. There we go, Phantom Muspa Manipulator. Definitely not the easiest combat achievement ever, but considering it is a Grandmaster six-point achievement, didn't take too long and wasn't that hard, so yeah. 
And now I'm done with Phantom Muspa achievements. The only things left are the speed tasks. So those will come with time and when I get better gear. Oh my goodness. It's the dream drop. My first Venator Shard with my first Elite Clue of the Task. That is so funny. Oh my god. That's actually, like, almost unbelievable. Kill number 134, which means I did 89 kills before my first Elite Clue. So I got a little bit unlucky there. But then getting the Venator Shard on the drop, that is just so funny. Man, I just realized we're probably like 15 minutes into the video and I haven't even done a single elite clue yet, but uh, finally we got one and I got a hard and a medium to go do with it, so be right back with some caskets. Okay, there is all of the caskets acquired now for the fun part. Um, I'm kind of strangely hoping I don't get a unique. I'm so close to being able to uh, saturate my imbued heart. I want to go back to Muspa, so yeah, I kind of hope there's no unique here. Wow, that's so weird. The only thing in that clue was a subscribe button. I guess now you have to press it. <laughs> Thank you, game. That was honestly such a bad elite clue. 40k? Are you kidding me? <laughs> but uh, yeah, back to us, but cool. Hey, let's go, number two. Man, that feels so good. Going from being a little bit dry, obviously I went to like 130 something before my first shard, and then getting two in like 10 kills, it just, it feels so good. Hey, another icon, nice. Hey, there we go. Funny enough, I was just about to record a clip because I actually have enough Ancient Essence to saturate my heart. And then I also got an Elite Clue on that trip. So that is very convenient. Well, apparently my recorder didn't turn on, but uh, I made the saturated heart. I'm sorry, I, didn't, I don't have the clip of it being made, but... Uh, yeah, Saturated Heart is a plus 12 magic boost for 5 minutes that doesn't drain, so it's essentially like a magic divine potion. And yeah, that's just sort of always useful going forward. Anytime I need to do any magic, this is just great, great to have. So yeah, there we go. I'm still upset that I didn't have it recorded, but whatever. Sorry, I made a mistake. It is a plus 13 boost to magic, not a plus 12. Uh, it puts you at 112 magic level. That's what I was thinking of. Anyways, let's go do my elite clue. Even though I got enough essence to saturate my imbued heart, I think I am going to stay at Muspa, you know, if I don't finish the task on this clue. Uh, just because, like I said, I do still want that Venator bow, and uh, getting two shards pretty early made me feel a little bit more confident going for that. Although now, at this point, I am at like 180-something, 185 kills, two shards. Like, that's pretty average luck. Uh, I do, I do want it, and it is useful, so I think I am going to stay there. It is still theoretically a good way to get elite clues, even though I have been pretty unlucky. I think I've got two clues in, like, 150 kills-ish. So, yeah, even though I'm a little bit unlucky, I think I am still going to stay there. Assuming I don't finish the task here. Man, this is the first time I've been out here since they changed the models on the Lava Dragons, and they actually look really good. All right, there we go. Elite and Hard Clue are both are done, which means I'm going to open this casket. And this time I actually am hoping to finish the task. I don't really mind either way. I can stay at Muspa and go for those Venator Shards, but uh, yeah, it would be nice to finish. So let's just do it. Neato! Lava Dragon Mask. Cool. For those that don't know, the Lava Dragon Mask is actually on the Mega Rare drop table. Uh, it's not one of the like super Mega Rares, but it's the same chance as Gilded which is kind of cool. It's completely useless other than looking cool, but uh, yeah, that's that's something. Wasn't expecting that to say the least, holy. 
So I actually had to go and look it up because I wasn't sure, but the Lava Dragon Mask is a 1 in 14,663. Like I said, the exact same chance as Gilded, uh, which is slightly more rare than the rarer elite items, such as the Tuxedo pieces, which are 12,750 drop rate. Uh, but I didn't realize that the Lava Dragon Mask is actually on the rare uh, collection log. This is the first item I have on any of the uh, Clue rare logs. So that's actually pretty cool. I, I, I'm a lot more happy with it now that I know it's there. So yeah, that's that's pretty sick. And not gonna lie, this is some top tier fashion scape. It looks just amazing. Okay, just to correct myself once again before you do it in the comments, apparently there's like sort of two tiers of rarity for gilded items. A uh, lower tier, which is the one in 14,000 that I said, and then there's the higher tier, which is a one in 32,000, which is like all of the main armor pieces and some of the weapons. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to correct that because I know if I didn't, people would comment about it. You know what? Never mind. Comment about it anyway. Tell me about the tell me about the gilded drop rates. Thank you. By the way, going forward, if I ever get a piece of Gilded or Third Age or whatever, uh, most of the time it actually doesn't count towards the task. Because you can get it from multiple different clues, for example, like a Gilded Plate Body, you can get from Hard, Elite, or Master Clues, so it doesn't count for any of those specific uniques, unless it's only on that specific table. So for example, the Elite Clue, the Lava Dragon Mask is only on the rare Elite Clue task, uh, or on the rare elite clue log, so it does count towards the elite clue tasks. At least that's the distinction I'm making in my mind. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to clarify that, but uh, yeah, anyways, that was an incredibly successful elite clue task. We got the 150,000 essence to saturate my heart. We got two Venator shards for uh, getting the bow eventually, making some progress on that. We got a mega rare elite clue unique for the task. I mean, it, it honestly couldn't have gone any better. So with all that out of the way, let's go roll a new task. I really don't know what sort of task I'm looking for here. I guess it doesn't really matter. I'll get what I get, but uh, yeah, let's just complete the task and let's see what we're going to go do. Get one unique drop from God Wars Dungeon. Okay, perfect. Honestly, God Wars Dungeon task, although I may not have known it before, is potentially like the perfect task for me right now. Uh, last time I had a God Wars Dungeon task, I ended up going to Bandos and I got a Bandos Hilt uh, when I was really hoping for a chest plate and or a Tacits. So I'm going to go back to Grardor. Uh, I would love to see a Godsword Shard 1. That way I could make a blade and actually use the Hilt. And I would love to see a chest plate or Tacits. Even the Bandos boots would be okay. I already have the Tormling Core so I can make the Guardian boots. And I've heard that the Guardian boots are going to be useful in an upcoming update. Uh, where they can do like AoE damage or something. I don't really know. So pretty much anything I get from Bandos is going to be good. I would prefer the chest plate or the tacits, but we'll get what we get. So let's just go get geared up and send it. Okay, going to be doing the same thing as usual. Bofa Alter Door. Uh, I think this is just the best way to do it. You get the most kills per trip, which means the most kills per hour, which means the highest chance at a unique per hour. And yeah, hopefully it doesn't take me as long as it did last time to sort of remember what I'm doing. Last time it had been a while since I had done anything like that. And uh, yeah, it took a while. I died a lot. So I'm hoping to die significantly less. That's my goal. Okay, uh, we're just going to forget the fact that I forgot to change to the Archaea spellbook and swap up my runes for thralls and just pretend this never happened. Well, the first trip was fairly successful. I did have to teleport out due to running out of food, uh, but other than that, it was pretty good. I got a bunch of super restore drops, just didn't really get many food drops. No, no sharks, a few chili potatoes, but uh, not enough. So I had to go and restock and we will go again. Okay, <laughs> a shard two from a minion, all right. <laughs> I got an elite clue. That's so funny. And I guess the last task was a good indication. I need to be better at doing my elite clues. 
Uh, all the other clues are pretty easy to get, all things considered, but elite clues do take a while, so I'm going to put in an effort. Every time I get an elite clue, I'm going to do it as soon as possible. Hopefully, we can stack up some elite caskets before we roll another task. It's funny, I've done a lot of bossing recently, but most of the stuff that I've been doing has been, like, newer bosses. Stuff like Muspa and Raids and Alchemical Hydra and stuff like that. And going back and doing some of these older bosses, they're just so... Lame. <laughs> no offense, General Gardor, but the fact that there's like, there's no mechanics, there's no like necessarily like skill to it. Obviously, there's the rhythm of doing the whole Bofa Alter Door method, but I don't know. It just feels so lame. I'm really happy with the direction they've taken the newer bosses, adding like actual mechanics, stuff on the ground to dodge, prayer switching, reacting to prayers, etc. Instead of just sort of clicking on the boss and hoping that you do enough damage before they kill you. I don't know, I I understand it's necessary, like you can't really change these bosses much, but they are pretty lame. Also, I've decided to swap from Thralls to Ancients. Uh, the kills will be a little bit slower in terms of like kills per hour, but I think it'll be more consistent. The extra healing from Ancients is just so nice, and this way I won't have to rely on food drops to keep my health up. And, uh, yeah. Also, also, uh, yeah, I did, in fact, accidentally teleport out of Bandos' room after my very first kill of the trip when I was trying to Alka Rune Longsword. That did happen. Alright, well, there is the end of that trip. Uh, bringing Ancients was 100% the play for me right now. It's just so much easier, ending every kill at full health. You kill the minions faster because you're killing two of them at once. It's just, it's so nice. I don't know why I wasn't doing this from the start. Everything online was like, oh yeah, just bring Thralls. It'll make your kills faster, and then you can use Bones to Peaches to heal up. But uh, yeah, this is, this is way better for me for sure. Somehow, I'm at 304 KC, and I have none of the armor pieces, which is about two and a half times the drop rate. Uh, so in that regard, pretty unlucky. But then again, I already have the 1 in 500-ish Bandos Hilt, and I got a 1 in 1500 shard from a minion. So I'm both, like, extremely lucky and unlucky here at Bandos. I don't really know how to feel about it, but now that I'm doing this ancient method, uh, the kills and the trips are feeling a lot better. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go back, do it again. No! I had to think about it for a sec, but I'm definitely missing the God Sword Shard 1, and I'm very upset about it. Well, good morning to the gamers. Uh, a little task update for you. I'm at 363 KC, meaning that I am almost three times the drop rate to see any armor piece, uh, which means that I probably should have seen one of each of them at this point, but... Uh, that's neither here nor there. There was a game update today, and there's a few useful things in there for me. First of all, they added some search functionality to the collection log. So, for example, if I wanted to search up a boss like Duke, you can just type it in and then click on it. And I don't know, that's that's pretty cool. You can also search items. Like if I type in ban bando bandos, there we go. Uh, you can see all the bandos items. So that's pretty cool. Uh, good update there. And they also changed the drop timer on clue scrolls. So now when you drop a clue scroll, it doesn't disappear for an hour, which is great. That is a huge update. Uh, makes clue juggling way easier. Makes it way more convenient if you're doing a Slayer task and you don't want to leave and you get a clue early. You can just drop the clue and keep going. Uh, so yeah, those are both very cool. Nothing huge in the update. Uh, and there is not going to be an update next week until Valamore comes out. So yeah, that's all for the update talk. Back to Bandos. Oh, just noticed I actually did pass the 381 KC. I'm at 383 now. So we are officially three times dry on seeing any of the armor pieces. So that's sad, but... Uh, yeah, here I am. Just gonna keep killing the boss. <laughs> Let's go! Oh my goodness, get me out of here. Oh my goodness, finally 392 KC. We've done it. Bando's chest plate. 
Oh my god, it looks so good. Oh, look at me. Now, if I was going to rank the three drops in order of what I would want the most, I think I would prefer the Tacits over the Chestplate. Uh, the Chestplate doesn't actually add a Strength bonus over the Fighter Torso. It just adds a lot of defense, which is very nice, uh, as well as Prayer, I think. Uh, whereas the Tacits do add a plus one over the Obsidian Legs, as well as defense. But both of these are significantly better than the Boots, so I am not going to complain at all. It looks amazing. Oh my goodness. And so, yeah, if we compare the Fighter Torso to the Bandos Chestplate, you can see plus one prayer bonus, plus a bunch of defense bonus, uh, specifically range, crush, and stab bonus, and still the same plus four strength bonus. So, yeah, it doesn't actually make me any stronger in terms of melee DPS, but it's just so much more tanky, and honestly, it just looks good. <laughs> I don't know what it is about the Fighter Torso, but it just looks like so mid-game, whereas the Bandos Chestplate really makes you feel like you're in the end game and... I don't know, I just, I love it. I think I'm still going to be going back to Grardor on the next God Wars Dungeon task or two, uh, obviously, to get the Tacits, and I would like the boots. Like I said, there is potential for them to be pretty useful, so this isn't the last of Grardor that you've seen, but I am so happy to be moving on, man. I will say, all of a sudden, these Obsidian Plate Legs look so bad. <laughs> Everything else I have is, like, late or end game stuff. Obviously, there's still some upgrades like Infernal Cape, Avernic, uh, Ferocious Gloves, etc. But these Obsidian Plate Legs are just... they just look so out of place. Anyways, let's go roll a new task. I've just been eating dinner and hitting a star and I was gonna start some editing, but I got really lazy. So we'll do that later. I want to go see what our next task is. All right, spreadsheet time. Complete the task. And I'd like to do one more task this video, so let's see what we're doing. Get one unique from the Desert Treasure 2 bosses. Okay. So I think the choice is a no-brainer. I'm going to be going back and killing some Duke. Last time I killed Duke, I did manage to get the Frozen Tablet, so we have the Teleport to get there quickly, and I would love an Ice Quartz. I'm probably going to end up getting an Awakener's Orb, because I still don't have one of those, and they still count for the task. Uh, but yeah, Duke was fun, and I didn't get to do too many kills, so this is gonna be nice. And not to mention, going to Duke means I get to use my new Bando's chest plate. Sorry, I just can't get over how good it looks. Alright, pretty much doing the same thing as the last time. I got the zombie axe for when he's on a 5 tick cycle. When he goes to enrage phase, I got the salad blade. I am bringing a crystal halberd for specs this time. Last time I was specking with the arc light and I feel like I wasn't hitting very much with it and it wasn't really doing much. So I'm just bringing the crystal halberd for damage. And I got thralls, I got my pick, I got everything. I'm ready to go. Ooh, PB, nice. Well, I, I, I don't know, man. I think that's my cue to go to bed. I'll continue this tomorrow. Uh, okay. Hey, let's go, Ice Quartz, heck yeah. Well, that was surprisingly easy. Almost suspiciously easy. But, okay, sure. Uh, Ice Quartz acquired, still no Awakener's Orb, which is kind of surprising, but uh, this one is actually useful. It increases the freeze duration uh, when you put it on the Scepter, and I can actually use that at a few places, like Muspa, uh, so that is actually useful to have and completes the task, and I got seven Dragon Plate Legs dropped for, like, a mil? Th that was great! I am really enjoying these Desert Treasure 2 boss tasks. Initially, I was kind of concerned because I haven't really done them before. Uh, the only time I'd ever really killed any of them was Leviathan on Leagues, and obviously Leagues makes it completely different. 
but they're actually really fun, not too difficult, give good rewards, both in the uniques and the regular drops, and yeah, they're just fun bosses. Obviously, like, comparing them to old bosses like General Gardor, where there's no mechanics, they're, like, just the right amount of there's enough mechanics that when you get good at them, it feels rewarding, but there's not too many that they're overwhelming. So I'm actually really enjoying them so far. Now, I don't know why you have to go back to Eblis every time you want to make a new Ancient Scepter, but here we go. Talk to him, show him the thing. He will combine the two of them, and then I can put the Ice Quartz on it and can't be undone. Yes, and there we go. Ice Ancient Scepter. Cool. Now, because that was actually a quick task, I think I'm going to try and fit one more task in the video. Uh, I don't really know where we're at video lengthwise, but you guys seem to be enjoying the longer videos recently. So even if this ends up being a bit longer, I'm sure you guys won't mind. So let's go roll a new task. All right, here we go. Spreadsheet time. Complete the task. And please be nice to me. Give me something. Give me something easy. Get one new unique from Master Clues. Okay. Well, this might be really quick or it might take a very long time, but I've already got 12 master caskets. I'm really hoping that I have at least one new unique in here. If I don't, then, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. Let's just not, let's not think about that right now. Let's just do it. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Lesser demon mask on the second casket. That's what you like to see. 10 left for the next task. But that didn't really count as a task, so uh, let's go try again. Okay, get that off my screen. Let's see what we're actually going to go do. Get one unique from forestry. Okay. So as far as forestry uniques go, I only have four left. And three of them are just random chance from doing events. Uh, the Fox Whistle, the Golden Pheasant Egg, and the Petal Garland. And the other one is the Funky Shaped Log, which is the Pet Recolor, which is very expensive, if I remember correctly. I believe it is 15,000 Anima Infused Bark, as well as 500 of every log. So I'm really hoping I don't have to buy that. It would be much cooler to get one of the other three things. Uh, but because the other three are all random, I just have to go and do forestry. So... Yeah, I guess I'm going to do that. They recently changed the way that the forestry events work, where now you have to be within the area when it spawns in order to receive anima infused bark, or the last trees that you cut have to be within the area or something. I don't really know how it works, uh, but the important part is the old meta of joining a CC and just teleporting around all the events doesn't work anymore. So instead, I'm just going to come here to the Mist Guild, going to chop some magic trees and do any of the events that spawn and this way I can AFK and just go and do some editing or something while I wait. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to be doing this, I guess. I am already starting with 1,600 Anma Infused Bark, so I would need around 13,400 in order to afford the funky shaped log if it comes to that. Like I said, I'm really hoping that I get one of the event random items because that would make things a lot easier. Uh, but yeah, even if I don't, I do still have that as an option. I would have to go and get all the logs because I don't know how many I have in the bank. But yeah, that wouldn't take too long and, you know, I just hope to get lucky. Okay, hello, good morning to the gamers, or good afternoon to the gamers in this case. I've been doing forestry all of last night and this morning while I edit my video. And uh, yeah, I'm up to around 10,000 anima infused bark. Completely ignore this bark or logs per hour. That's not accurate at all. Apparently that uh, continued to tick down while I was sleeping. So just ignore that. Uh, I've probably been doing this for about six hours now. And yeah, still no luck on any of the drops, but... Uh, lots of bark, lots of logs, pretty good AFK time to get my editing done, so I am happy with how things are going. And, uh, yeah, just gonna keep going. And in case you're wondering, I'm just banking with my Achievement Diary cape here at the Shanty Pass and then teleporting back with my Myths cape. This is the main reason that I wanted to do it here. One, magics are already very AFK, but now I have an extremely easy banking method as well, so it's just really convenient for me. And uh, I do have Entity Hider on. There are a bunch of people here. I'm not just cutting by myself. I just don't like the way it looks.
Oh, hey, would you look at that? I should be at 15,300 animal infused bark. We have enough to buy the thing, uh, but I believe I need to get a bunch of logs. So let me go check. So to buy the thing, you need 500 of all the logs being oak, willow, teak, maple, mahogany, arctic pine, yew, magic, and redwood. And of those, I have most of them. I need 51 more willows and then a bunch of arctic pine and oak. But other than that, I have all the logs, so this shouldn't take too long, uh, but I do have to go and gather some things, so I will be back in a bit. Now, the good news is, this task has given me just enough time to finish editing my video, and I only need like 100 more oak logs, so that is very convenient for me. After collecting all the bark and logs that I needed for the task, I was so close to a woodcutting level, I'd figure I might as well just come up here and get it. So there is a 94 woodcutting, and yes, I have all the logs, so let me go and buy the thing. Alright, I got my bark, I got all my logs, I'm buying the funky shaped log. I really hate that I have to do this, but it is what it is. And there we go, minus one bank space. And we can put that right next to the other forestry item, just wasting bank space in there, but... Uh, we are done. Honestly, it wasn't too bad. Usually I don't really like forestry, but the fact that I needed to edit a video was convenient for me, so I can't really complain. Uh, but yeah, let's go roll a new task, see what we're doing next video. Okay, here we go on the spreadsheet. We can complete the forestry task, and I don't know if it made a difference, but I, uh, I realized that there was accidentally too many forestry tasks on the Elite tier. I don't know how it happened, but I removed the ones that were extra, so there is only three left, which is to get the three remaining RNG uniques from the forestry events, so that is fixed. And, uh, yeah, let's generate a new task and see what we're doing. Almost definitely gonna have to save it for the next video, but if it's quick, we might be able to fit it in now. Get one new unique from Elite Clues again, okay. Well, I do already have a one single elite casket in the bank already, so I could open it right now and hope for a unique. If we get it, we're already done and we can move on, but if not, probably gonna have to do this in the next video. Let's just open it and see. Well, we got a master clue, that's kind of cool, but uh, yeah, probably gonna have to save this one for the next video. Well, this is unfortunate. I made it five steps into this master clue and I need Bando's boots, which uh, yeah, I don't have, so rip master clue. But yeah, that's going to have to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed, as those are the best way to help my videos with the YouTube algorithm, and they are both greatly appreciated, so thank you. Obviously, earlier this episode, I already did an Elite Clue task at Phantom Muspa, and I'm going to decide what I want to do going forward. I might stay there for some more Venator Shards, but I also might decide to mix it up, considering that I already got the essence to saturate my heart, but that is something for future me to figure out. For now, that's going to have to do it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. And a big thank you to all of my channel members, but a special thank you to my Tier 3 Big Spoon channel members, Alchemist BTW, Jack Staumer, Zach Martin, Luxitaire, Tony Adkins, and Dolph. Thank you guys, and thank you everyone on screen here for the support.